welcome to Made Every Day. How many times have you purchased a necktie of your dad or your husband or maybe for yourself? Well, I am gonna show you how to make one. It's easier than you think. A necktie is one of the few fashion choices a guy gets to make when he wants to dress it up a little bit. So why not give him even more to choose from? I love making these as gifts for family, and I especially love making them for my son Owen, who surprisingly likes wearing a tie to church. Here's what you need. One yard of fabric for the tie, and one yard of fabric for the lining. Now you might think sewing a tie sounds complicated because it's typically sewn with silky fabrics and there's a lining. I mean, anytime you say the word lining, it starts to sound complicated. But it's really similar to sewing bias tape, which I've shown you how to do before. It's kind of like one big, long piece of bias tape. There you go. Now, you can sew men's ties that are kind of a standard width, like this one here. Or, what we're gonna make is kind of this more skinny, hipster kind of style. You can make it for men, you can make them for boys. And, today, I'm going to be using a pattern that I sell on my website. Go to madeeveryday.com. It has two pieces, a front and a back like that. But if you don't have this pattern, no big deal. Just take a tie that your husband owns, if he doesn't mind you cutting it apart, or go to the thrift store and buy one, and deconstruct it. In fact, my daughter asked me the other day, how do you know how to sew a necktie? And I said, well, I just took one of dad's ties apart and figured out how to put it back together. That's what a lot of sewing is about, deconstructing and then putting the pieces back together. So let's cut out our fabric. I've got my two layers of fabric here. I've got the lining fabric, and then the outer fabric for the tie. And I'm gonna cut them at the same time because they're the same pattern pieces. And just like bias tape, we're gonna cut our pattern pieces on the bias or the 45 degree angle. And if you remember, the reason that's important is that it gives the fabric a little more give on that 45 degree. And if you see in our tie here, when I pull it down, it actually has a little bit of give, which is great when you're going around curves or around objects such as your neck, it lays really nicely. And also, the fabric looks kinda cool going on the diagonal. So let's get our pattern piece. And when you see the pattern piece at first, it looks like you're making like a giant clown tie. It's going to be folded to the back, so don't freak out or think that you're cutting it too largely. And I should also point out this little marking down here that says grain line. That arrow means it should go parallel to the selvage of the fabric, which is where the printing markings are and things like that. So let's place that here. I'm lining that up straight, just like that and then pick up your back piece. It looks similar to the front, except it's a little skinnier. And I have actually traced the pattern onto cardstock like this. I like to do that with pattern pieces that I use frequently because it's just a little easier to trace and cut and things like that. Okay, this time around I'm actually gonna trace. I know I usually say that I like to just start cutting, but I find that this helps just a little bit to cut it perfectly straight without missing any edges. <laughs> okay, I'm using a fabric marker here which is the kind of marker that will either erase when you press it with an iron or with water or it just disappears over time. It's totally magic. Okay, we're done tracing. Set your pattern pieces aside and let's cut those out. I'm just using scissors. You could use a rotary cutter and a mat if that's how you like to cut. And again, I'm cutting through both layers at the same time. This will make sure they're exactly the same size and it just saves some extra time. I'm all about saving time. Okay, I'm done cutting the back and the front. Now let's sew them together. We wanna to sew the back and the front together so that it makes one long continuous tie piece for us. So, turn in this direction and just like when we sewed bias tape, what we're going to do is line them up on the diagonal and you'll notice that it actually makes a right angle, which feels a little awkward from what your brain is probably telling you to do. But you'll notice that once we sew it and we flip it out, you can see that it makes one long, nice, continuous line for us. Now you want these two little triangle pieces to overhang just like that, about a quarter of an inch on each side. And then when we sew with a quarter inch seam allowance, it's all gonna work out smoothly and look great. So pin that in place. Just a couple pins is probably fine. And we're gonna do the same thing with the lining pieces. Put that aside and grab these ones. And you'll notice when you're using solid colors, it's easy to get confused. You definitely don't ever want to sew it going the same direction like that. You might think that's what you want to do, but watch what happens. When you sew that, it makes a little V. You want to turn it so that it is going like this. Okay, there you go. Okay, let's go to our sewing machine. 
And you can see I'm gonna line them up right where those two little corners come together, which is a quarter inch seam allowance. Do a forward and back stitch. And sew right down. When you get to the end, it should come out at that same little corner. Do a back stitch. Cut your threads. I love my cutting feature. And there we go, just like that. Then you're gonna clip these little corners with your scissors. Clip those off just like that. And do the same thing with the lining. Now press each of those seams open, and then let's pin everything together. So lay one on top of the other with right sides of the fabric together, and you wanna match them up at the two ends. Those are the only parts that we're going to sew right now. Just like that. Pin it in place, and then we'll do the same on the other side. Pull it down, and it's really important here that you make sure everything is flat all the way across. Otherwise, you're gonna have kind of a little bubble in your tie. If you get to the other side and they don't match up perfectly, no big deal. In fact, look at that. Mine doesn't match up perfectly. Either my sewing skills or my cutting skills are slightly off. So let's just take our scissors and let's trim that a little bit. Like that. And then pin that end together. And if it's still off when we're done sewing, we can still trim it even a little bit more. Okay, we're going to sew with a quarter inch seam allowance along that, and a quarter inch seam allowance along that. And it's really important that when you're sewing the point of the tie that you take your time and don't go too quickly so that the point looks really nice and precise and perfect. Okay, do a little back stitch. And sew right down. If you find that you're going too fast, you can always adjust your speed right over here. That way you can take it slow. When I get to the point, I'm gonna pause right there, lift my presser foot, pivot and turn and go back the other direction. And then sew the other side. These ties are really fun to make and I'm always amazed at how quickly they come together which is really fun for Christmas gifts, for Father's Day gifts, for birthday gifts. I mean, come on, how often do we get our dad or our husband a tie? Do a back stitch. Okay, let's trim our seams just a little bit so that there's less bulk on there when we turn it right side out. Just cut, I don't know, about an eighth of an inch off. Like that. And then at the point, I also like to cut just even more so that you can really get a nice point. Don't cut so close that you are cutting into the threads or you'll have to sew it again. No big deal though. Let's trim this one. There we go. And then let's turn this right side out. It's always fun to see the point come together. Stick your finger out. If you can't get a really good poke like that, use a little chopstick, a pencil, something that helps. And there you go, there's our first point. Now let's turn our second point. Just like that, poke it out. Both of those look really great. Okay, I'm pressing out each end just so it looks really nice and sharp. And I should point out that when you're selecting fabric for the lining, it's nice to use something, well, first of all, maybe a color that complements. You don't see it, but it always looks kind of fun. And for this outer fabric, it's a little more stiff, so the lining, I've selected something that is a little bit thinner. And you can go vice versa. If you have a fabric for the outer that is more on the thin side, use a thicker fabric on the lining. That just gives nice weight to your tie. You don't want it too thin and you definitely don't want it too thick or it's gonna be difficult to tie it in a knot. Okay, let's pin this thing together. You wanna fold the entire tie in half lengthwise and match everything up. It should match up perfectly because it's a symmetrical shape and pin it in place. And then we're gonna sew down the whole length of the tie. But as we're pinning, we wanna insert a little loop into there, which you'll find on the back of neckties, about six inches up from the end. And what that's used for is that when you have your tie on and you tie it around your neck, you can insert the back in there and it just kinda of holds everything together. You definitely don't have to add that in there, it's optional, but it is kinda of nice and it adds a good finishing touch. And you can use a variety of different things. I actually used some bias tape for this one. You could use ribbon, you could use twill tape, which is what I'm going to use right here. You can purchase this at the fabric store. And you want to cut enough that it's just a little bit shorter than the width of this whole tie so that it's not sticking out beyond the tie. So that looks about right. I have it folded in half here. I'm going to cut it. 
And again, I'm inserting this about six inches. It doesn't need to be precise. It goes right inside here. We're gonna sandwich it right inside our tie as we sew it. Pin that in place. And then just keep pinning down the side. Okay, our whole tie is pinned and we're ready to sew right down. I'm sewing with a quarter inch seam allowance here. Start at the top, do a little back stitch, and then just sew down the whole length. When you get to the part where we inserted that little loop, just kind of go slowly, make sure your machine isn't getting stuck or having a hard time going through it. Okay, just like that. And we're almost back to the other end. Do a back stitch, cut your threads, and now for the big reveal moment. Grab a safety pin and attach that to one of the ends. And then we're gonna pull this through and pull the whole thing right side out. Go down inside, push it down, and then just keep pulling, shimmying. If you ever made a scrunchie in the 80s, similar vibes. It can get a little bit crowded when you get near the middle here, but just do your best, you'll work through it. Oh, there's our little safety pin. Okay, now just pull the whole thing through. There we go. Okay, there is our tie. Now, it's not quite finished yet. It still looks a little funny. So, come to your iron here, and this seam that goes down our tie is going to be in the back middle area, so that on the front, it looks nice and perfect. And the great thing about this is that if you are off at all on your sewing, you can make this point centered exactly, even if the back of the tie doesn't look perfect. So make sure that looks really nice. Okay, that's great there. And press that all in place. And this step, you really wanna get a nice, firm press. Maybe go over it a couple times, use good strength of your arms. Make it nice and flat. Here's our little loop that we sewed. And we're gonna just press that flat as well. And you could make these ties with fancy fabrics as well, like silky fabrics or brocade or different things like that. It's fun to play around with different fabric types and see what happens. Okay, I think I've pressed it enough. Okay, one last little step. Let's kind of tack this little loop in place that so doesn't flop around like that. I have a needle and thread here. I'm just going to go into the fabric and make sure that you're not going through to the front fabric. I'm just grabbing the back fabric. I'm going to sew, I don't know, a couple little stitches, nothing big. And when we're done with that, tie a little knot in it, like this. Cut that off. Okay, trim this up a little bit, just get rid of any excess little thread tails that are hanging around, make it look nice, professional, and there you go. For more ideas and tutorials, visit my website, madeeveryday.com. And for more information on sewing machines, go to babylock.com where it's all for the love of sewing. I'll see you next time. Bye.